Good morning to everyone. As, uh, as she mentioned, it's been another, for most of the state, a very unusually mild, uh, or we'll call it somewhat uncomfortable given the humidity here. And bottom line is uh, more of the same but we do see some changes here, probably looking at the early part of next week, but we've got, we're stuck with the same weather pattern that we're in right now, at least for a few more days. Uh, looking at the last week here in review, uh, definitely a warmer than normal week. That isn't a surprise given again, especially at night. Uh, we've had a lot of minimum temperatures over the state here in the upper sixties, even this morning uh, here, my place in Hazlitt, uh, only 71 for a low which is fully it probably 12 or 13 degrees above what we, we typically see uh, here in, uh, in late August. So much, much above normal in the overnight hours. And it's a reflection once again, as we've seen several times this summer, very high humidities. Uh, our dew point temperature is still in the low 70s. We've even had some creeping up towards the mid 70s. And that's, that's pretty unusual uh, for Michigan. That's true across uh, much of the Corn Belt and of course, uh, also makes it for people being outside and also for livestock, very, very uncomfortable. We just can't, uh, uh, our per perspiration is not as efficient in cooling us and uh, that the humidity is why. So uh, again, not surprisingly here for the last week, statistically, um, our temperatures, our mean temperatures here from five uh, to more than eight degrees Fahrenheit above normal. One other part of this is it's, and you, you may not see it, but we are really racking up the degree day units right now, way, uh, quite, quite a bit above normal. And I'll show you a, a graphic that, that uh, illustrates that here in just a moment. Uh, on the precip, and this is, a, I apologize for the scale on this. Typically we concentrate on Michigan, but there has been so much going on, not just in the US, but also internationally with, uh, with precip, either way too much of it or way too little. And again, we don't, uh, you don't have to look very far, but here, uh, just to give you some some orientation. Michigan's up in the upper part of this. It was uh, the vast majority of the precipitation you see here, especially uh, the half to one inch totals across central and southern lower, that fell the night before last. That was the uh, overnight Tuesday into Wednesday. Besides that, much of the state was, uh, was very dry or unusually dry. In some cases, no rain here for the entire week. So a little, little bit unusual, but Contrast that with, with uh, areas here uh, around us, not too far away. And one I, I, I just want to highlight because it's, it's, a, it's just one of those uh, events that makes you stop and think this, uh, this pink, dark, uh, almost purple color here. This is the uh, heavy rain event in Western Tennessee, just to the west of Nashville, that it was catastrophic. Uh, more than 17 inches of rain fell here in a 24 hour period, uh, which is off the charts. It would, uh, if it's verified, and there, there are a couple of observations in that, that ballpark, if it does verify, uh, it will be a new record for the state of Tennessee. Here in Michigan, by the way, if you're, if you're interested, it's just a little bit less than 13 inches for our 24-hour total. And that was just set uh, just a, a July ago, so not that, not, not that long ago. But again, uh, 17 inches of rain anywhere in a 24 hour period is, is just a recipe for disaster. And of course that's what we saw, but you, you can easily see that here uh, showing up on this. Uh, again, this is uh, radar imagery or radar estimates that have been calibrated with ground observations. So uh, pretty close to the real thing. Also note here over large portions of the east Eastern part of the US uh, up the Appalachians, the, all of this rainfall here and a lot of it's in excess of four inches, some cases more than eight inches, uh, two tropical events, uh, tropical storm events. One, the remnants of tropical storm Fred, which went through about a week and a half ago, especially for the central Appalachians. And then Hurricane Henri, which made landfall in Rhode Island here uh, this past Sunday morning. And you can see all of this, again, yellows and reds. That's all associated with, with Henri. So the tropical, the tropical events, tropical storms, hurricanes, et cetera, they make a huge difference in the, basically the climate certainly the hydroclimate of, uh, of the southeastern and the eastern U.S., and there's a great example, uh, but a lot of rainfall records have been set here recently, and, and uh, it's, it's been one of, those, one of those crazy kind of years. I mentioned the degree days. Uh, this is the seasonal total beginning on May 1, and these are uh, base 50, and these are using the corn, the 8650 corn cutoff method. The current totals here on the left-hand side, and then 
I think more importantly, on the right-hand side here, the departures. And you can see that uh, they range from uh, very, very close to normal in, uh, in portions of upper Michigan, the northern part of the state, uh, to significantly above normal. We now have uh, an area here across southern lower Michigan, more than 250 units above normal. So that would, that would put us, uh, push us maybe 10% above normal. That's a fairly healthy surplus. And remember, uh, just a few weeks ago, we were, we were a little bit ahead, but nowhere near where we are now. And this is a reflection, once again, of the warm weather of the last couple of weeks, especially at night, and, and more of that to come here uh, as we look ahead in the next few days. Soil moisture uh, depends, uh, again, on location, as it typically does. Uh, there are a couple of dry spots in the state uh, that we're mentioning. Western Upper Michigan is one of those uh, that has become, especially over the last several weeks, and, and then also uh, areas of the thumb, which uh, have really never quite caught up from the deficits we incurred here earlier in the season. Uh, contrast that with uh, many portions in, in well, northern lower uh, Michigan, where we actually, and you can see this in the green colors here, where actually these percentiles are above normal in terms of our plant extractable moisture here at this time of the year. So uh, actually most spots are doing fairly well. And we do have, uh, here we look at the forecast, we do have more rain coming or on the way for most spots. And that's what I'll concentrate here. But in the short term, it's safe to say we can expect a continuation of our, and let's just call it a heat wave condition. We're right on the border of what the National Weather Service considers to be an advisory. We had one yesterday. We probably will have one uh, over the next few days, at least on one of the days. I think Saturday might be the warmest day of all these. But this morning, we've got a couple of weak frontal boundaries. One uh, you can see right along the Indiana-Ohio border, the state line here. Uh, these are drawn here to, to make, make it look like they're really important. And this is not, uh, and I guess it's a, it is important to note, these are not, in this case, they're fairly weak boundaries. Uh, they're, they're not like there's a huge air mass uh, moving in from one place to another. There's another uh, air mass behind this, another cool front up, way up to our north. That actually will lead to somewhat cooler conditions over northern parts of the state, uh, but it'll never, it, because the upper airflow here is from southwest to northeast, uh, any cool air that's coming out of Canada, it just can't make it very far south, and it's going to be deflected off to the east, and uh, all this heat and humidity that's currently across the central part of North America, and certainly the central part of the U.S., with all the high dew point temperatures, it's never going to go very far, and ultimately, over the next couple of days, what you're going to see on the weather, weather maps here, this frontal boundary basically just eases, oscillates north and south, north and south, and as it does that, it provides almost a daily chance for at least isolated showers and thunderstorms. Yesterday was, uh, was fairly dry across most of the state. Of course, on Tuesday, we had quite a bit of convection. Uh, I, we'll see the same pattern here for today and tomorrow, and then on to Saturday and Sunday. Finally, at the end of the weekend, it does look like we'll see uh, a little bit better push of, of cooler and drier air into uh, the state uh, to, to change things up a little bit. So today, expect uh, once again, hot, humid conditions, especially in the south, heat indices up in the upper 90s to near 100. Uh, and we will see, again, a few isolated uh, showers or thunderstorms, especially in the far southern part of the state. I think it'll remain dry as we go north of that. Here's the weather map for tomorrow morning. Not much change. You can see the frontal boundary now. It's drawn as a stationary front, and it's going to ease northward. And that's the theme in the short-term forecast. This boundary will probably continue to drift north and actually turn into a warm front. And, uh, and actually, they'll get a little bit of a surge of warmth and humidity up in the northern parts of the state late Friday into Saturday. And so if we look at the next few days, the first best chance, at least for more widespread precip, I use the word isolated, maybe scattered, but I think it's going to come uh, actually tonight as this front starts to move north, but a better chance uh, Friday uh, into early Saturday, and especially in northern parts of the state. Uh, here is the weather map then for Saturday morning, and you can see that the boundary has shifted all the way up towards the straits uh, in the northern part of the state, and, and that's where the best chances for precipitation will be. So again, looking at the next 48 hours, I think the best chances for most of us will be uh, tomorrow, especially tomorrow night into early Saturday, and especially across northern areas of the state. Uh, it is gonna be, though Saturday looks like it will be the warmest day of all uh, of the next several, 
with highs in the low 90s, south to uh, probably mid to upper 80s in the north. And then finally Sunday, uh, it, it's hard to see here, but there will be another shot, another ear mass with some cooler and drier air that finally moves through. That's probably gonna come in overnight Sunday into Monday. So uh, after getting through Sunday, the last day of probably warmth or heat, we will see a noticeable change. It won't be, it won't be huge, but it's certainly gonna be cooler. Highs uh, generally upper 70s north to maybe low 80s, that type of temperature, which is pretty close to where we should be for the last week uh, in August, much, much closer. And we'll actually in the Southern part of the state, we'll see our, our minimum temperatures drop back down into the 50s once again. It's been a while since they, they've been there. So uh, somewhat of a, a notable change. It also will be relatively dry. Now there's one more fly in the ointment here, sort of an unknown, and that is uh, looking at the tropics. And right now we have uh, down in the Caribbean uh, near the Yucatan, there's an area of, uh, of well, of convection, uh, which is a concern. It looks like it's gonna develop, very likely will develop into a tropical depression and then ultimately might what would be tropical storm ida that's the next uh, i believe is the next letter there and if you look at the model guidance it's fairly consistent taking it through the gulf of mexico making landfall somewhere on the u.s gulf coast and then of course the question is well where does it go after that well the models are saying it's going to come up into the at least into the middle mississippi valley it could be a player for us here by the middle of next week so that's why i put a question mark here uh, something to watch. Uh, but other than that, we should see uh, cooler, uh, fair, and, and drier weather here for the early part of next week. This would be the next low chance, maybe by the middle of the week after the precip we see here uh, over the next couple days. In terms of totals for the next week, how much? Well, it, uh, location, very, very important here. Greatest totals, greatest chances for precipitation here over the next several days are gonna be in northwestern parts of the state and then decreasing as you go southeast towards uh, the Detroit metro area. And you can see that pretty clearly here with more than an inch and a half, some cases more than two inches here possible. These are the uh, precipitation possibilities uh, and they, that uh, decreases here to less than half an inch in the southeast. So a pretty wide range or variety here, again, from northwest to southeast across the state. And right now I think that looks like a good bet uh, on, in terms of how things will, will shape out here uh, over the next week. Potential evapotranspiration rates will be a little bit above normal for the next several days, especially given the warm temperatures, but that's balanced, of course, by high humidities already there. Uh, our totals for the week here looking through next Wednesday, you can see range from a little less than an inch total to uh, about 1.2 inches down in the far south. So again, just maybe at or a, a a hundredth of an inch or so above typically what we see for uh, for late August. So not a, nothing earth shattering there uh, for uh, for water demands. Other than uh, it's going to depend on whether how much we see from uh, from this this convection as well. In the medium range forecast guidance, still some consistency. The jet stream forecast here, you can see a ridge forecasted over the middle of the country, and anytime you see that troughs over the far west and the far east. Uh, you can bet on above normal mean temperatures. And that is really, I think, the most important theme in the forecast. Both the six to 10 and eight to 14 day outlooks are fairly, fairly uh, similar in terms of calling for this. But in the eight to 14 day, I would note that the forecast jet stream flow becomes more zonal with less amplitude. And when that happens, uh, we lose a lot of confidence there, and at least in terms of which direction we might be going with temperature or precip. So we'll put a question mark there on that, uh, again, that two week type time frame. But in terms of precipitation with this pattern, there still should be uh, a, like we see right now with this frontal boundary lingering in the area, uh, relatively frequent chances for precipitation. And as a result of that, for the six to 10 day outlook, it calls for normal to a little bit above normal uh, precipitation totals. And that also looks, I think, like a, a decent bet as well. Now, there is a new uh, long lead uh, ensemble of outlooks here, uh, and this is uh, this was issued last Thursday, right after we finished up our briefing last week. The September month of September is on the top here, with mean temperatures upper left and precipitation on the upper right, and no change really, or not a lot of changes here uh, for the mean temperatures in September, forecasted to be near to above normal, or at least that's what the statistics or the odds would favor. The change, though, 
uh, that we do see, and, and it probably isn't much of a, it's not a surprise given what we just saw in the medium range, but that is that uh, the Climate Prediction Center has introduced more of a, of a wetter than normal theme for the month of September. That really had not been a part of the, the previous outlooks, but it is for this one. And again, I think it reflects that medium range forecast guidance. And then moving down to the bottom here for the fall, the September through November period, solidly in warmer than normal. That's been, that, that theme has been there for several months now, and it, it continues. So that's, that's gives us a little bit more confidence in that, uh, that particular outlook. Uh, and the precipitation outlook is also very similar to what we've seen before, the EC or equal chances. So no direction on, uh, on precipitation totals, whether they're below, near, or above normal. That's, that's what we have seen for the last couple of months. One last thing for the, uh, the long term, by the way, it is looking more and more likely like that we are going to see a repeat La Nina uh, condition here in the equatorial Pacific uh, develop by late in the fall or the early winter. But as uh, most of you probably remember, that that typically is an issue for us. It's most likely to be an issue for us in, in the middle to the latter part of the winter. It would be the second La Nina event or the consecutive one, the second year of this in a row. Last year was one. But it's important to note that we did not see weather conditions typical of uh, La Nina last year. Uh, usually we do, but last year was an example of, of one of the, the uh, instances when we do not, but that's likely your, the, the forecast here for the upcoming winter as a result of this, uh, this tendency, the, the La Nina development, likely to be probably uh, wide swings in temperature, uh, averaging out near normal, but for above normal precipitation, greater than normal snowfall for much of the state here, typically La Nina, especially during the middle to latter part of the winter. So that's right now, you want to look way out. That's, uh, that's probably uh, what we would put on, on the forecast. And with that, I'll wrap up here again. Heat wave continues uh, here for the next few days, but there will be there will be a couple fairly decent chances for precipitation uh, in the state, especially tomorrow into early Saturday, and then again at the end of the weekend. And uh, finally, after the heat and humidity of the next several days, look for some changes towards cooler, drier, and less humid weather for the beginning of uh, of next week, and then uh, wrapping up. Medium range and long leads still push us back towards above normal or warmer than normal weather. And I, that's, that's probably the most important theme there. Now I'll wrap up the weather and move, to, uh, move on to introduce our speaker next week. And that's our own uh, MSU Extension educator, Dennis Pennington, uh, who uh, think about the time of the year as we get, uh, get into the late summer and fall here, uh, is gonna be talking with us about weed planning and management. We're thinking ahead here, uh, as we move into the end of the this, this spring crops and, uh, and think about fall crops. And so with that, I'll turn it back to you, Sarah.